ikhwani wa ahbabi fi Allah wa tamaman Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh mpenzi mtazamaji wa Zanzibar TV Fahari ya Zanzibar tupo katika Masjid Salam iliyopo mlandege Zanzibar Tanzania nayo siku ingine isipokuwa ni kwa jambo moja ambalo muhadhiri mkubwa kutokea katika ardhi ya Uingereza leo atakuwepo hapa kwa ajili ya kutoa muhadhara kipi ambacho atakachokizungumza na namna gani itakavyokuwa basi moja kwa moja kwa sasa mtazamaji tuingie ndani kuweza kumsikiliza Sheikh Abu Taimia namna gani atakavyotuambia mimi ni Swali Albarawi kijana wa Tamama kwa niaba ya DOP Director of Photography Kahale tukuingize msikitini kwa ajili ya muhadhara huo faliyatafadhal mashkuran majua right number two. What was the first one? Calling for the structure of society to be changed so that men and women are equal. She's constantly in your face saying, no, right? Equal rights. Islam came to establish justice, my sister and my brother. Even if she's a multi-millionaire, Islam says, you still have to put clothes on her. You still have to pay for the bills. This whole 50-50 stuff, where did it come from? Came from the West. So my sister, my sister, who's listening, right? This whole system is not there in your best interest. By the way, I'm not saying that a woman can't work. There's a difference between a woman working and her pursuing a career. Does that make sense? So that's the first thing. Number two. Number two. Waging war against the traditional role that a woman has had throughout society. Number one is to change the structure of society so they can be equal. Secondly, is waging a war. Right? Attacking the traditional role that a woman has had throughout society, which is her being a mother, which is something alim. Her bringing out the next generation, doing tarbi of them, so that they can become proper men and proper women. But now they make a feel, is that all you're doing? Right? Is that all you're doing? Before it was equal rights, now in the UK and in the West, huh? the woman comes out, she goes, today, I'm going out for work, you breastfeed the child. You go breastfeed the child. Before it was just equal rights, no, no, now you stay at home, you breastfeed the child. Right. My brothers and my sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He tells us why He destroyed certain nations. Allah tells us, وَلَقَدْ أَهْلَكْنَا أَشْيَاعَكُمْ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرْ أَشْيَاعَكُمْ meaning أَسْلَافَكُمْ Indeed, we have destroyed those who came before you. فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرْ أَيْ مُدْتَعِدْ Is there anyone who wants to take the reminder, who wants to take heed from the admonishment? Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and my sisters, He then gives us examples of Qawmi Ad, the people of Ad. Which prophet was sent to the people of Ad? Huh? Hud, Ahsantum. Right? And their story is mentioned in the Quran time and time again. Right? How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy them? A very severe wind that was extremely, extremely cold was sent their way, my brothers and my sisters. Right? A very, very cold, severe wind that was sent to them, which would destroy them, my brothers and my sisters. You know what he would do? Right? This huge wind would take them off the floor. It would take them off the ground, take them for a spin, and then they would smash onto the ground with their head cut off from the body. Right. Thamud, my brothers and my sisters, were also destroyed. Thamud, my brothers and my sisters. Right? Who or which prophet was sent to the people of Thamud? Salih, Ahsantum. Bis Sayha. Inna arsalna alayhim Sayha tan wahida. Fakanu kahashim al muhtadir. Right? This loud noise that struck them, my brothers and my sisters, no one from amongst them was left. 
right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us likewise about Lut and his people, right? How did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy the people of Lut? فَجَعَلْنَا عَالِيَا سَافِلَهَا وَأَمْطَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ حِجَارَةً مِنْ سِجِّيلٍ Right? Allah Azza wa Jal will lift the people of Lut. He will lift them. And then my brothers and my sisters, right? They would be flipped upside down. And when you think about it, subhanAllah, right? How Allah Azza wa Jal destroyed them, He flipped them upside down. Right? Perhaps maybe because they flipped the fitrah, the natural disposition, upside down. The way Allah Azza wa Jal created you, وَأَنَّهُ خَلَقَ الزَّوْجَيْنِ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَى Allah says He created the husband and wife as what? A male and a female. Also Allah tells us, وَلُوطًا إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ أَتَأْتُونَ الْفَاحِشَةَ مَا سَبَقَكُمْ بِهَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِنَ الْعَالَمِينَ When Lut, he said to his people, right? أَتَأْتُونَ الْفَاحِشَةَ By the way, I'm just quoting the scripture. Abu Taymiyyah doesn't have his own views and opinions for the camera. وَلُوطًا إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ When he said to his people, you carry out fahisha. مَا سَبَقَكُمْ بِهَا No one ever preceded you in this. From the time of Adam and who? Adam and Eve, right? Not Adam and Steve. Not Adam and Steve. Adam and Eve. From that point, that should teach you a huge lesson. From the time of Adam and Eve, all the way to Lord, this wasn't the natural disposition. This wasn't something that was considered normal according to the scripture. They came and they flipped the natural disposition. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended up flipping them. Right? And then we also know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he do to the people of Nuh? He drowned them. The people of Fir'aun, what did Allah do to them? He drowned them. فَكُلًّا أَخَذْنَا بِذَنْبِهِ فَنَّا عَلَيْهَا صِبًا وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَخَذَتُ صَيْحًا وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ خَسَفْنَا بِالْأَرْضِ Allah tells us, from amongst them there were those who were drowned. There were amongst them those who had a wind sent to them, a sayha, a loud noise. Right? And Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah didn't wrong them, but they were wronging themselves. Right? My brothers and my sisters, we have all of these nations that were destroyed. Also, we are told in the Quran, my brothers and my sisters, there were individuals that were destroyed simply because they did not enjoin the good and forbid the evil. Right. Have you guys heard of Muslim Spain? Before I mention all of these verses and all of these hadith. Muslim Spain that was in the hands of the Muslims. Spain today, my brothers and my sisters, that you see. Huh? When they win the Champions League, where do they go, my brothers and my sisters? Who can tell me? When Real Madrid huh, wins the Champions League, one of the first places they go to to take the trophy, where is it? Have you guys seen the videos going around? Huh? The church. Ibiza. Right? That statue that they have. Huh? That they go and take the Champions League huh? trophy too. I remember that was on Twitter. It's not called Twitter anymore. It's called X. Right? Karim Benzema, he was actually being criticized. Why was he being criticized? Because he's a Muslim. He even goes Umrah and everything. And perhaps he doesn't even know. But the reason why they were criticizing him is because he was actually leading it and right in the front holding the trophy, connecting it to this statue. Which has what? A pagan, shirki significance. Once a ton of time, my brothers and my sisters, Spain was in the hands of the Muslims. Alis Kadalik, Andalus. You have Granada in Arabic, right? Al Garnat, yeah? Garnata. We have this great scholar called Ibrahim al Mas'ud, Abu Ishaq al Biri, Al Garnati al Tajubi. 
right? Granada, right? Ibn Abdul Bar, Al Andalusi, Andalus. Spain, my brothers and my sisters, was from the places that the Muslims would travel out to to take knowledge from. Right? It was a hotbed for knowledge. But then what happened? Right? Zina started becoming more and more prevalent. They fell in love huh? with the Spanish lady. Hmm? Fell in love with her. Zina started becoming more and more prevalent. Right? But it didn't stop there. The elders from the Muslim community, they wouldn't say anything. They would turn a blind eye. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them. Allah azza wa jal, he ended up destroying them. And this, my brothers and my sisters, is mentioned in the Quran. Right? The destructions and the punishments of Allah azza wa jal. It's not just him taking you off the face of this earth and al-khalas. La. It could be that Allah Azza wa Jalla will send upon you a adu, an enemy that will tear you to shreds. And this is exactly what Allah Azza wa Jalla says. Right? فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ أَنْ جَيْنَا الَّذِينَ يَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ السُّوء وَأَخَذْنَا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا بِعَذَابٍ بَئِيسٍ بِمَا كَانُوا مَا كَانُوا يَفْسُقُونَ And when they left off forbidding the evil, they stopped doing al amru bil ma'roof wa nahyu anil munkar. Right? Allah saved those who were, and then the rest, they were destroyed. Allah Azza wa destroyed them. And there were three groups of people those who would say something, Allah saved them. And then there were the other two those who would remain quiet, and also those who would actually engage in the haram. They were two categories of people that Allah Azza wa destroyed and they are mentioned in Surah Al-Araf. Right? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my brothers and my sisters, he said in the hadith that Wallahi, he honestly sends shivers down my back. Right? The wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Zainab bin Jah, she asked a question. Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Anahliku wa fina salihun. Will we be destroyed as a nation? And amongst us are those who are righteous? The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Naam, Ida kathur al khabath, if fujur, fisk, evil, filth, fahisha becomes widespread, when the adab comes, the punishment, as Allah, as the Messiah is telling us here, it could be that Allah saves you. But here the message Allah is saying, when the adab comes, it's going to come and take everyone. The punishment is not going to say to you, you're not going to get revelation from Allah, because the revelation has come to an end. The adab comes, it's not going to say, Muhammad, get out. No, it's going to come and take everyone. However, those who are sincere and righteous, as mentioned in other hadith, right? When Allah resurrects everyone, يُبْعَثُ النَّاسُ عَلَى نِيَاتِهِمْ They will be resurrected based on their intentions. And what they used to do before. If you were someone who used to take the initiative to at least make a change, then inshaAllah ta'ala, you will be from amongst them. Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi alayhi, he narrated from Al, uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu ya jama'a who would say nahnu ummatun a'azzana allahu bil islam we are a group of people that Allah has honored through al-islam wa mahma abtagayna ghayra al-islami a'zallana allah the moment we begin to desire other than al-islam Allah will destroy us Allah will destroy us the moment we begin to take right where they may be the disbelievers, right? The kuffar, the mushrikun. We begin to take inspiration from them in how to structure our lives. We will be in a state of humiliation. And I can testify to that. That's exactly what is happening in the UK. And in other places, 
around the world that have become westernized. They began to choose other than an Islam in the household, my brothers and my sisters, wallahi, there's humiliation. Right? They are living in a state of humiliation, right? Lack of satisfaction, right? Nothing seems to be going well. Also, Umar al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sulh al-Hudaybiyah, the treaties of Hudaybiyah, when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam signed off on that which Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu felt would humiliate the Muslims. Umar said, O Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, right? Alasna ala al-haq wa hum ala al-batil. Are we not upon the truth and they are upon batil falsehood? Alaysa qatlana fil jannah wa qatlahum fil nar. Aren't those who died from amongst us and those who were killed, aren't they in the Jannah and aren't theirs in the Hellfire? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, Ibn al-Khattab, Inni Rasulullah. O oh, Ibn al-Khattab, I am the Messenger of Allah. وَلَنْ يُضَيِّعَنِ اللَّهُ أَبَدًا Allah will never ever forsake me. He did this for a reason for the greater good. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could see that which maybe Umar al-Khattab couldn't see. Right? That's why he signed it off. Even though the Muslims, after signing off, it was a disadvantage to them. But the Messenger وسلم, was looking at the bigger picture. And later on, what the Messenger was looking at actually became a reality. Right? And sometimes, my brothers and my sisters, you have to take one for the team, as they say. Huh? Are you brothers and sisters with me? No. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said Tushikul qura an tukharraba wa hiya amira it is feared that villages right and it's not just specific to villages but cities countries that are flourishing right even though they are flourishing there will come a time when it will be destroyed qila wa kayfa tukharrabu wa hiya amira how will it be destroyed and it's flourishing so much? Right, what does this mean? If the wretched, if the fusaq, the transgressors, the worst of the people in that society, right, they take over and they take the reins from the righteous and pious people. وَسَادَ الْقَبِيلَةَ مُنَافِقُوهَا And the hypocrites, they are the ones that are leading the tribes. Right? This is when Allah Azza wa will destroy it. My brothers and my sisters, you may say, Oh, look how well the UK is doing. Look how well the Americans are. Look how well we are doing even though there is what? Fujur and fasad that is so widespread. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in Surah Al-An'am, Something that is called al istidraj What does that mean? Allah says, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِحُوا Right? فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى إِذَا فَرِحُوا بِمَا أُوتُوا أَخَذْنَاهُمْ بَغْتَةً فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْلِسُونَ Right? When they left off that which they were commanded with, Allah said, we خلاص, we started opening up for them the glitters and the glamours of this world. Here, go take. The parent, all they care about is I need to make sure that my son is successful. Right? Success is measured, go to university. At all costs. Wallahi al-Azim. One time a parent messaged, sorry, one of the son of the parent messaged saying, Akhi, I want you to give me some advice. My sister has become a kafira. She is apostated. She's left the religion of Islam. And my mother doesn't want to talk to my sister about it. Why? Why? I'll tell you guys why, right? If she opens up this discussion, my sister might get angry, might get upset, and her education might get affected. If this young lady passes away tomorrow, she passes away tomorrow with her shahada, right? With her certificate, her bachelor's. 
How is this bachelor going to benefit her in the grave? She's going to die as a kafirah, as a disbeliever. We're not talking about major sins here. We're not talking about zina. We're not talking about pornography. We're not talking about even what murder. These are major sins. If one has Islam, Tawheed, but they died with all of these major sins that they didn't repent from, you are under the will of Allah. Do you die as a kafir? No. You are under the will of Allah. Meaning, Allah may punish you for it, or He may forgive you. And if He decides to punish you in the hellfire, because you had Islam, a tawheed, monotheism, sooner or later you're going to come out of the hellfire. But if you die upon kufr, or shirk, my brothers and my sisters, right? You die on that, not having repented from it, no chance are you coming out of the hellfire. This is mentioned in the Quran. Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha. Allah does not forgive shirk, meaning if you die upon it, but anything other than that, you are under the will of Allah. Right? Imagine, ila had al had. This is meant to be a Muslim family. But my daughter has apostated, I don't want her to become distracted or to become thrown off. And you know what it boils down to a lot of the time? That mother, when she's now in gatherings with other ladies and other aunties, they bring up the conversation, huh? What did your daughter accomplish in university? Right? Her pride is saying, my daughter got a degree in medicine. Right? My daughter got a degree in mathematics. It's all for that conversation she's going to have with her friends. Right? At the expense of what? At the expense of what, my brothers and my sisters? Can you see how the two are connected? Dunya and also what? أُشَبِّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَمْرَ دِينِهِمْ I'm going to give them doubts about their religion. Right? You have been made to think that I must take my children there. Okay, no problem. But then, at the expense of their religion. This is why, and you don't have to agree with me, right? I tell young people, right? I think it's ludicrous. I think it's crazy. Taking yourself to these universities and you're not well equipped. You don't have the tools now to repel these doubts. My brothers and my sisters, I went to university in the UK, Loughborough University. I was doing civil engineering. I seen with my own eyes people going around, huh? Targeting vulnerable Muslims who are on the edge of their religion. They are known as Orientalists. People who don't, people who learn our religion, not so it can be guided, but to target vulnerable Muslims and I'm thinking to myself I'm here doing civil engineering while well, these guys are learning my religion huh to use it as a weapon against vulnerable Muslims right and then my brothers and my sisters the shaitan coming from the back right the shaitan coming from the back I believe it's Abdullah ibn Abbas or Abdullah ibn Saud they said, Asayyat, right? Sins. He orders them with it. And he encourages them now to become, right? Engro engrossed within these sins. This is the devil, my brothers and my sisters, right? Now, let me take you to another verse from the Quran. Today, we want to take a lot of verses and put it into, right, context so that we can relate to it. Huh? Allah says in the Quran, so you have an idea how. The world is being run. Alam tara ila alladhina utu nasiban min al kitabi yashtaruna dalala. Allah says, Haven't you seen those who have been given a portion of the book? They had knowledge. The people of the book, you know who they are, right? They were given knowledge. Books were sent to them. Right? Yashtaruna dalala. They spend with their wealth. Right? To spread misguidance. They want you to go far, far astray. Let me ask you guys a question. Right? How much do you think America spends in a year when it comes to making the world a very colorful place? But you guys, you know what I mean by when I say the colorful place? Huh? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? 
طيب how much do you think they spend I'll give you guys uh, is it in its thousands put your hand up if you think it's in its thousands طيب hundreds and thousands that America spends طيب millions we have one brother here طيب billions a lot of people put the hand up you're all wrong Wallahi brothers it's in its trillions I believe it was in 2021 they spent 1.3 trillion dollars to make the world a very colorful place right how can they jama'ah huh what do I mean by colorful place rainbow and the rainbow understand now nah. Wallahi, you know sometimes we have people in places like Kenya I spent just nine days there in Kenya and I kept on telling them this maybe here in Tanzania we look at the West and we look at people on Instagram and we feel sorry for ourselves we feel sorry oh I'm missing out look how much they're enjoying themselves Wallahi al-Azim ya laytukum ta'alimun if only you knew Wallah you're missing out on nothing right absolutely nothing parents are stressed out right with what's happening in the universities now is being shoved down their throats rubbed on their faces these children my brothers and my sisters hmm? what they're being fed that brings me on to the first point my brothers and my sisters we said we'll mention three right the first point that will cause one to become deviated and that is not enough propagation of what is correct not enough propagation of what is correct you might know something but you remain quiet right you might know something but you remain quiet and this is exactly now what is happening in the UK because of fear mongering tactics that are being used fear mongering tactics they're scaring them. Now, if you say something, this is going to happen. When in reality, Allah is not. Right? I was in contact with solicitors and lawyers for a whole year before I started being vocal about these things. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be very honest. The first khutbah I gave about this topic, Allah, I was scared. I was shaking on the member. Normally, I don't shake. Sometimes I speak to 10,000 10, people in a Eid. It's fine. No problem. Huh? No pressure. But that time, I was shaking, brothers and sisters. Even the masjid was getting scared. To make things worse, after the khutbah, a brother came up to me and he shaked my hand and he said, Jazakallah khair for the khutbah. But I'm scared, very scared for what is going to happen after this khutbah now. And then he walked off. And he said, may Allah protect you. Alhamdulillah, nothing happened. Because in front of all of these khutab, now lectures, we put these disclaimers that I'm not here to incite violence and phobia and alhamdulillah I'm still alive. Huh? I'm not on the ground, wrapped up, right? Chained up, la abadan. Right? There are ways around it. And by the way, my brothers and my sisters, these are not issues that are just specific to Muslims. Right? This is not just specific to Muslims. It's also a Christian thing. I came across a signed agreement by 200 right, Torah Jews. They refer to them as Torah Jews. Alongside mental health and medical doctors, right? Who all collectively signed this agreement saying that this is something that is immoral. This practice of homosexuality is immoral. And I'm just quoting here, right? I'm just quoting here. They came together and this is exactly what they signed off on. Right? My brothers and my sisters, I'm mentioning all of this limada. Different ideologies will enter into your communities. Different ideologies. I'm talking about these modern day ideologies that is destroying right, Muslims and more specifically it is targeting our women. Feminism right that will destroy your household it stands on two pillars my brothers and my sisters number one 
calling for the structure of society to be changed so that men and women can be equal. Right? Up until the 1960s, a woman has always been a housewife and a mother. This is a great, it is a great occupation that a woman has. But what's happened now? The Western woman has made our sisters feel that she is now, right, wasting her potential. Just a housewife, just a mother. And then what happens? It creeps into your household, my friend, who is very traditional. And then there is a war with you and your wife. However, it was there to be make them more engrossed within their filth and evil. When they became excited and they began to rejoice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hammered them. And destroyed the oppressors and the wrongdoers. And wallahi, sometimes I think to myself, is it, is it this that's, what's, that's, that's actually happening to us right now? When the doors of this world have been opened up for us, right? You look at the past nations, Allah Azza wa Jal, He destroyed them for a set number of sins. Am I wrong to say that? Isn't this exactly what happened? For a set number of sins. Allah destroyed loot. You can maybe count the sins on your one hand because of kufr, because of homosexual, because of this and that. Ad were destroyed because of this and that. Nuh, this and that. And you look at us as a nation, we have just about every evil you can think of. Allah says, وَيَا قَوْمِ لَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شِقَاقِي أَنْ يُصِيبَكُمْ Right? مِثْلُ مَا أَصَابَ قَوْمَ نُوحٍ أَوْ قَوْمَ هُودٍ أَوْ قَوْمَ صَالِحٍ وَمَا قَوْمُ لُوطٍ مِنْكُمْ بِبَعِيدٍ Right? Shu'ayb would say to these people, right? لا يحملنكم أي لا يجرمنكم شقاق قومي لا يجرمن شقاقي. The fact that I'm on the other side of the fence, I'm against you guys. نعم. But don't let that now stop you from becoming afflicted by what afflicted the people of Nuh, the people of Hud, the people of Ad. And what happened to the people of Ruth was not far away. It's going to happen to you guys as well. All of these nations, wallahi, when we think about it in the Quran, all of those sins is what extremely widespread within us. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, Inna nasa idha ra'awa al-zalima falam ya'khudhu falam ya'khudhu ala yadayhi aw shaka an ya'ummahum Allahu bi'aqabin min indih. That when the people, they see someone doing wrong, al-zalim, the oppressor, and they don't do anything about it, it is feared, that when the punishment comes, they will also be afflicted by it. This hadith, my brothers and my sisters, will perhaps put things into perspective for us. وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَتَأْمُرُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَتَنْهَوُنَّ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ أَوْ لَيُوشِكَنَّ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَبْعَثَ عَلَيْكُمْ عِقَابًا مِنْهِ ثُمَّ تَدْعُونَهُ فَلَا يَسْتَجِيبُ لَكُمْ Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, By the one who my soul is in his hand, you either enjoin the good and forbid the evil or it is feared that Allah will send a punishment and then you will make dua to Allah you will raise your hands to Allah and you will make dua and then my brothers and my sisters the response will not come right you will not have your invocations and your duas responded to right let's look at it more on a personal level my brothers and my sisters right on a more personal level one of the common questions that I get is, I make dua all the time, and I make dua, and I make dua, but no response. It could be that one prays, makes dua in his sujood, but right after that, he's on his way to doing a sin. How do you expect your dua to get accepted? You're praying when you need something. Could be just when you need something, you pray, and then you make dua, and then right after that, you're going out to commit a sin. How do you expect to get your duas responded to, my brothers and my sisters? Right? This is just on a personal level. Right? On a personal level, my brothers and my sisters. Or within our households, we allow our children now to do evil and filth. Right? As soon as we finish the salah, we go to the TV and we're watching what? Netflix. And it's Gadalik. 
put on the fahisha or maybe we are facilitating it and then when things start going wrong within our kids Ya Allah help me and in reality we're actually what facilitating that one last hadith I'm going to mention before I move on to the other two points and I'll just mention in passing because I've been told I've only got a couple of minutes Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said لم تظهر الفاحشة في قوم حتى يعلنوا بها إلا فشى في مطاعون والأوجاع التي لم تكن في أسلافهم الذين مضوا right Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said never will there be فاحشة filth and evil that becomes widespread حتى يعلنوا بها so much so that they will do it openly you know the corona that happened my brothers and my sisters ما رأيكم فيها what do you think of it was it يعني shocking for it to take place and become so widespread now والله it was shocking to me the corona right becoming so widespread and affecting so many people and countries and dual and it ended up affecting the economy in such a way Wallahi it was a surprise to me and that is because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said never do people start publicizing their fahisha in the UK we have pride month guys proud openly right I have a lecture online my brothers and my sisters it is called the hidden LGBTQ and pedophile files I did a lot of digging up I wasn't doing a lot of ayat you know I'm now quoting a lot of verses and it's more ilmi right what I did was I took so many medical articles that is very hard to find online now wallahi I went through so much trouble to find these articles medical articles huh? and what some of these practices actually do this homosexual practice is what it does to an individual and I was just quoting doctors and other studies that were carried out by non-Muslims. When you get a chance, please watch it. This hadith will make a lot of sense. Illa fasha fima ta'un, except that Allah will send what? A ta'un. Huh? How do you say ta'un again in English? Plague. Allah will send a plague. And sicknesses and diseases that wasn't present before. That you didn't have before. Influenza this, influenza that. Bird flu this, bird flu that. All of these different sicknesses that was unheard of. So what's number one, my brothers and my sisters, that will cause deviation? If we don't start teaching our children and start talking to them about what is right and what is wrong, tomorrow, my brothers and my sisters, don't be surprised when the child comes home and is confused. Dad, shall I call my... Sh this is a boy saying this. Shall I call myself today she or they or them? This is what's happening right now. And other things. Number two, my brothers and my sisters, lack of knowledge. Ilm is what is going to help us navigate around fitna to shubuhat and fitna to shahwat. How long do I have now, Ya Shaykh Juhayfa? How long do I have? Two minutes? Is it? Huh? Tayyip. He wouldn't be going through this depression and this stress and these problems now in his life. Young people are messaging me. I did zina. I did haram. Huh? I did all of this. Boyfriend, girlfriend. And now I'm sitting around feeling sorry for myself. Sick. Diseased and so on and so forth. And number three, my brothers and my sisters. You will see yourself deviating away due to a lack of tawheed. Lack of knowing who Allah Azza wa Jal is. Today we tell our young children, pray, wear the hijab. Wallahi, they don't know who they're praying to and why or who they're wearing the hijab to. Right? And they don't know Allah. We're just telling them as if it's some ada, some regular, you know, cultural practice. And they're thinking to myself, everyone's not doing it, why should I do it? It's because they don't know who Allah is. They've not internalized it. It hasn't settled within their hearts. They don't know anything. And as you can see, all three are connected to one another. Perhaps the third point, we will elaborate on it, inshallah ta'ala, in the Q&A. And Allah knows best. You need to do that right? Tunao miongoni mwa wali hudhuria katika muhadhara huu ambapo watutamba fursa ajitambulishe pamoja na kutuelezea. Karibu sana ajitambulishe pamoja na 
kuzungumza mawili matatu juu ya shekhe wetu huyu Uh, naam karibu asalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi jina langu uh, Shafiq uh, Shafiq Masudi uh, ni resident wa United Kingdom um, in England in the UK Ndiyo. and uh, pia ni, ni acquaintance wa Abu Taimiya Sheikh wetu um, Ustaz uh, Sheikh Abu Taimiya mm. uh, tuko naye katika jiji la Leicester ah mnaye tuko naye katika jiji la Leicester mimi naishi mji unaitwa Coventry City ndio yeye yuko Leicester City takriban ni meli 20 ndio kwa 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 distance eh. na kama nusu saa kwa gari alhamdulillah kwa hivyo Uh, alivonipa taarifa kwamba atafika Zanzibar ndio uh, na tutakuwepo naye usiku wa leo uh, alhamdulillah katusalishe salatul maghrib salama hapa atmasjid ya salama hapa mlandege uh, mjini maghribi Zanzibar alhamdulillah na um, hii ndio ilikuwa safari yake ya kwanza kuja hapa ah, mara yake ya kwanza mara yake ya kwanza na ndiyo. alikuwa anajua anakuja kwenye kongomano la Jumamosi Dar es Salaam lakini alikuwa hana uhakika matafika Zanzibar na. kwa hivyo nataka nimshukuru uongozi wa msikiti huu uh, Masjid Dar es Salaam hapa Mlandege kuweza uh, very quickly kwa haraka sana kumpata aje kutusalisha salatul maghrib siku ya leo Ndiyo. na pia ku, 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 ku kutupa ma, 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 mawili mawili matatu alhamdulillah wito wako sasa nini wito wangu kwa vijana kwa ukweli alhamdulillah na nitapika some items um, our points of discussion nambayo Sheikh wetu Abu Taimi amezungumza kwamba dunia tunaoishi sasa hivi ni dunia imebadilika. Mm. Unaona amezungumzia mambo mbalimbali mbali, how dunia imebadilika na kwamba wazee wanahitaji kuwa karibu sana na watoto wao. Ametoa mifano mbalimbali mbali, mm. which sisi wenyewe tunaoishi Uingereza tuna tunai tuna experience hiyo mifano. Mm. Unaona mfano mmoja aliotoa ambao uh, kwa kweli umeni, umeni touch mimi ni kwamba katoa mfano mmoja kuna kijana kijana mdogo waingereza huko hiyo ni fano waingereza aliyotoa maana yake raha ya abu ustaz abu taimia anakupa real life examples yeye mwenyewe aliyopitia mm. sasa akasema kuna kijana mmoja wa kiume kamfata yeah. akamwambia kwamba dada yangu mimi ameingia kwenye ukristo Ndiyo. sisi waislamu tumezaliwa kwenye dini ya kiislamu lakini dada yangu ameingia kwenye ukristo Ndiyo. sasa mama analijua hilo na baba analijua hilo mm. Lakini hawataki kuyazungumza au kumdiscipline yule mtoto kumfahamisha kuhusu change of change of the religion Ndiyo. kisa yuko katika kipindi kigumu cha mitihani. Ndiyo. Unaona? Mm. Kwa hivyo wameka mitihani na elimu yake yule mtoto iwe bora kushinda dini yake. Ndiyo. Kwa hivyo utio wangu kujibu swala lako mkubwa ni kwamba lazima 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 wazazi popote walipo duniani Alhamdulillah channel yetu is in Jibar TV, Jibar TV. online TV na patikana on YouTube Ndiyo. Alhamdulillah na hapa mnatuona from all over the world all over the world so, Sheikh Marudia na Sheikh Salma Marudia sawa sawa namna unavotuangalia kule la Alhamdulillah mimi takriban mwaka wa tatu wa nne huu eh. tunatizama na Alhamdulillah kipindi chenu wa channel yenu uh, tumekuja kuijulia wakati wa Ramadhani na mimi na mke wangu tunapenda sana kuzama vipindi vyenu mbalimbali vya Ramadhani uh, tunakumbushana mingi alhamdulillah pamoja na uh, vipindi vya vipi kuwa kupiga vita na mashetani mbalimbali wanatuadhimu wanaharibu ndoa za watu wanaharibu mfumo wa maisha wa watu kabisa kwa hivyo alhamdulillah tuko pamoja nanyi uh, wewe mwenyewe um, na 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 nataka niseme tu kwamba Sheikh Watamama bwana wewe ni celebrity uingereza. Ah, ah, ni celebrity bwana. Uingereza. Uingereza. Wewe sana. Sheikh Salim Salimia. Uh, Alhabibi wangu bam, anaita Bamkwe. Sheikh Ali ah, Yusuf. Na na toyi. Uh, Asante Bamkwe. Kwa hivyo nyinyi wote ni celebrities na alhamdulillah endeleeni. Asante. Kuendelea kuendeleeni na ziada zenu nzuri. Nyinyi watu wa nje mnapokaa nje mnapokuja hapa kidogo neno moja ya Kiingereza hii inakuwaje na msharudi nyumbani hapa. Kwa nini msizungumze Kiswahili tu? Kweli, kweli. Sasa mimi nina hivi katika hili. Kiswahili naongea fluently alhamdulillah. Naongea Kiswahili vizuri kabisa lakini nahisi ni mazoea. Ah kwa sababu mshazoea nje. Mazoea. Hata nyumbani huko mimi naishi na mamangu mzazi huko Uingereza. Na tunachanganya lugha mbili. Asante. Maana yake tumepata fursa kuhamia kule wadogo sana na sasa hivi. Mpaka sasa Miaka 25 tuko huko alhamdulillah. Asante sana Sheikh Shafiq. Asante sana kwa kwa opportunity ya. Naoe pia bwana. Asante. Taban ama kwa hakika umestafidi juu ya muhadhara ambao eh, uliotolewa na Sheikh Abu Taimia eh, kutokea pale Uingereza na ulitolewa kwa lugha ya kigeni ya Kiingereza lakini baadaye ukafanyiwa summarize ukafupishwa kwa lugha ya Kiswahili na umestafidi sana muhadhara ambao umezungumzia mambo kadha wa kadha ikiwemo eh, swala zima la amani lakini hal kadhalika vile vile 
mambo ya tarbia yani swala lazima ya malezi lakini vile vile kutokana na mambo ya rainbow mambo ya ushoga LGBT nao umezungumzia katika hali hiyo basi muhimu zaidi mtazamaji kuweza kuyakamata na kuyafanyia kazi yale ambayo yaliyokuwa yamezungumzwa kutokea Masjid Salam iliyopo Mlandege mjini Zanzibar mimi ni Saleh Albarawi kijana wa tamama ni kwa niaba ya DOP Kahale mpaka mara nyingine basi kwa shukrani sana wa salamu alaykum wa billahi tawfiq wa tamaman wa ila al-liqa wa jazakumullah khair shukran wa ahsantum